Hey everyone, and welcome to CTN Videos. Today we'll be reviewing Microsoft Surface Pro. Let's begin. Surface Pro is the product that Microsoft Truth debuted to carry the banner of Windows 8 last fall. More powerful than the Surface RT that's been met with muted response from the market, the Surface Pro really fulfills the promise of Windows 8. Your PC and your tablet, your entire digital life, really, on one device you can take anywhere. Well, more or less anywhere. The Surface Pro, which goes on sale February 9th, is certainly portable, but it's chunkier than most tablets in its size class. Like the RT model, the Pro has the same 10.6 inch screen, but it's noticeably heavier, 2 instead of 1.5 pounds, and a bit thicker, 0.53 to 0.37 inches. The extra bulk is all muscle, though. Inside the Surface Pro is an Intel Core i5 processor, 4GB of RAM, and either 64 or 128GB of storage, putting it in a class with most Ultrabooks. The Surface Pro is a laptop in tablet form. Certainly, we've seen plenty of variations on the PC as tablet idea ever since the launch of Windows 8, but the Surface Pro feels more special. This is, after all, Microsoft's vision of how computing with its reimagined Windows should be. And the vision is compelling. Your work and personal lives combined in a single device made it as minimalist as possible. While the Pro still suffers from the ongoing problems with Windows 8, noticeably the lack of native apps and the oddness with how the new user interface sometimes works, the Surface Pro has won me over with its portability and power. Just for the reclaimed desk space alone, it's a win. From the distance, the Surface Pro looks almost identical to the Surface RT, but it's easy to tell the two apart when you look close or even just hold them both in your hand. The Surface Pro isn't just thicker, it has a telltale seam on the back that serves as a vent for the cooling fan. The fan is also a giveaway, audible when the tablet needs to tax its processor, which happens often, although it's much quieter than any MacBook. Both the Surface Pro and the Surface RT have a kickstand that allows them to stand upright at what Microsoft deems the ideal angle, 22 degrees, for tabletop use. Connectors are somewhat different between the two tablets. Although both have a single USB port, the Pro's is version 3.0 to the RT's 2.0. The Pro also has a mini display port for connection to an external display, something you're going to be using a lot more with this device, whereas the RT sports the micro HDMI connector that's more common on phones. Generally, though, the two surfaces are very similar, and it shows in their shared compatibility with Microsoft's much-hyped type cover and touch cover. The accessory fits both models perfectly, attaching to magnetic connectors with the exact same click sound. The Surface Pro serves as a competent tablet or laptop substitute, except for one thing, battery life. The Core i5 processor is a power hog. There's a reason the majority of tablets that run Windows 8 proper pack Intel's mobile Atom processors, and it barely got 3 hours when using it as a tablet, and just 2.5 when it was connected to a workstation with the Pro's screen on. Of course, the Surface Pro... If the Surface Pro is plugged into a workstation, which I expect the most common use case to be, it'll most likely be plugged into power, so battery life won't be a factor. The Surface Pro is at its strongest when it's the vehicle driving a full PC experience, complete with monitor, USB hub, and speakers. It's more than up to the task, and in many cases provides a better experience than under other Windows 8 tablets and hybrids. Then, when it's time to relax, the Surface Pro can go solo, becoming one of the lightest PCs you can buy. At two pounds, it's slightly heavier than other tablets, but it's still easier to carry than pretty much anything with a built-in keyboard. And remember, this is still your PC with all your files, apps, and games ready to get serious again anytime, anywhere, much different from the iPad or the Nexus 7. When that important document arrives during an evening Netflix section, se session, all it takes is a couple of taps and probably a type cover to deal with it. While the Surface Pro certainly has superior connect connectivity than other tablets, it is annoying that it lacks an Ethernet port. This is a common issue on tablets and ultrabooks due to the size of the connector, and most deal with it by supplying a USB adapter, but one isn't provided with the Surface Pro. You'd best invest in one, preferably that one can, that can take advantage of USB 3.0 speeds to get the most out of the device. 
Something you do get in the box, though, is the Pro's digitizing pen, which is made to work specifically with the device. It won't even work with the Surface RT. The pen is a pressure-sensitive stylus with a button to click input. It can attach to the magnetic ports on the Pro when you're not using it, but it's not a powered device. Microsoft says the pen has 1,024 levels of pressure sensitivity, painting thicker lines when you press harder, for example. However, that only works in apps that are designed to take advantage of the ability. Pressing hard works extremely well in Microsoft Fresh Paint, for example, but not in Autodesk Sketchbook Express. The eraser end of the pen has a cool function. It actually works as an eraser. The end is made of soft plastic to ensure it glides nicely across the screen. Again, drawing apps need to be able to recognize the eraser, but the two I mentioned had no problems. The diameter of the eraser, however, is about the same size as the pen and isn't easily changed. It provides a natural experience, but it isn't too useful for erasing anything big. Since it runs Windows 8 Pro, the Surface Pro is a real option as a workhouse PC as opposed to the Surface RT, which is primarily a consumption-oriented device. The RT is a tablet that can do some work-related tasks. The Pro is a PC that moonlights as a tablet. If the Pro is simmy by anything, it's Windows 8 itself. It can be unresponsive at times, and Wi-Fi is finicky, giving a limited connection every now and then on networks it was worth net networks it was working fine on just minutes before. In addition, the on-screen keyboard sometimes doesn't appear. One problem that isn't a bug, however, and affects the overall performance, is the unexpectedly poor ways the few apps that exist sometimes behave. This isn't hard stuff, but it does indicate that developers are still not used to the new UI paradigms of Windows 8. As I've said before, they're powerful, but it's up to developers to unlock that power, and so far they're kinda sorta doing it, but not really. I could go on, but I'm already venturing too far into the general problems with Windows 8 and not the Surface Pro. However, the Pro is intended to fill the, fulfill the promise of Windows 8, a digital world that's driven by touch interfaces, austere design, and constant connectivity. All that's well and good, but the execution is in the details and some of those still need work. Despite the challenges of Windows 8, the Surface Pro is still a device I'd recommend because it really solves a problem. If you're like me, your digital life is vast. It involves more than just access to apps and documents. It's also about having a device with the power to really unlock their potential. The Surface Pro is a great all-in-one getaway to your digital life, work, and play. It's better, on, it's better than a laptop because it's more portable. It's better than a phone because you can get more done on a big screen. It's better than other Windows 8 tablets because it's more powerful. And it's better than an iPad because it's made for productivity from the start. All of this is one big asterisk beside it, though. That being mobility cannot be a top priority. With its anemic battery life and relative bulk, the Surface Pro should not be your go-to device if you really want a tablet experience. But there's a difference between mobility and mobile computing. For the latter, the Microsoft Surface Pro offers one of the best experiences you can get. For my money, I would give this Pro at least 4 stars out of 5. If you have the right mental picture of what the Surface Pro is, it shouldn't disappoint you much. Although I would not recommend it for someone looking for a dedicated laptop or uh, just a regular tablet, I definitely think the Surface Pro is great for a secondary PC. Would you get a Surface Pro? Let us know in the comments below. We'd love to get your feedback on this hybrid. Also, please be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And also, check out CTN's website at ctntechnews.com for a lot more on the Surface Pro. See you next time.